I'm sat on my pet room floor. What a throwback. I mean, it's been ages since I've sat on my pet room floor and filmed, but I have a special two reptile delivery. So we're gonna go ahead and open that, open the box. Uh, I have been waiting for four hours, probably three to four hours, somewhere in that range. Just sat in front of the window. There's noises downstairs. Don't mind this calendar, it's very old. It's not up to date. I've been waiting for hours. <laughs> Just sat by the window. Oh yeah, this is merch, if you wanna support what I do here. It's linked below. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's two reptiles in here. One of them is a garter snake. This garter snake is a friend from Mikasa, but she is quite a bit too small still. I waited and waited for a long time to try and uh, hopefully, you know, help the grow faster. That way they could be a similar size to Mikasa. But, you know, Mikasa is still quite a bit bigger. So this one will have to be alone for a little bit as she continues to grow. Her name is Sasha. As you can see, she's coiled up with her paper towel. She has a quarantine enclosure that is plenty sizable for her, given her size. And um, it's not really an, a quarantine enclosure as much as it is just like a temporary enclosure until she's able to be with um, Mikasa and then they'll be in a bigger enclosure. So Mikasa is currently in a 36 by 18 by 18. And when they are together, I will be building them hopefully a 48 by 18 by 18. So. This is Sasha. She actually comes from a friend of mine that was originally going to take Mikasa when I was not sure if I wanted to keep her. However, of course I did decide to keep her. And then that individual decided to get garter snakes because they had already had some. They wanted to get some more, like to have groupings and also offered to get one for me and that was super nice. I actually held on to Sasha for a long time and then Mikasa had to have surgery on her tail so then they held on to her even longer. So now she is finally here. She's a wee thing. I'm gonna set her aside so I can unbox the second one but she actually is a pet only because she is a cross of two garter snakes and typically you don't want to do that. The siblings and her are all considered pet only because they were um, an accidental cross. So this is Sasha and we're going to move on to the next which her current name is Martha but I have already renamed her Rune because someone on my Patreon, I'll put their comment here. And as you know, I go with our names for my Rhocodactylus species or any of my New Caledonian geckos. Oh yeah, crested geckos are Coralophus. Man, I think I was in the hobby so long they used to be Rhocodactylus. Am I making that up? Anyways. Hello, little. Oh my god, this is the smallest I've ever had a crested gecko before. Oh shit, I might cry. <laughs> I'm literally crying. The way that this crested gecko just looked up at me was so cute. It's probably just ready to bounce, to be honest. Oh my god, I did not expect to weep. So the same person who had the garter snake had this little crested gecko who is ready to bounce. I know, sweetie. Um, This crested gecko who... It's currently named Martha. There you can see she's ready to go. So she was born and for whatever reason, she got stuck to her egg, which didn't happen with any other crested geckos that this person has ever had born there. And because her egg, her fingers were stuck to the egg, it caused them to like shrivel up because they're so small at that point. Um, there's like not much to them to be honest. So it caused them to shrivel up and the vet that they consulted just said, you know, these toes are necrotic, they're just gonna have to fall off and the gecko's just gonna have to have less toes. So they asked when I was having Mikasa's friend Sasha come to me, but they asked if I would want to take a pet only, like kind of disabled crested gecko. And I will include photos on the screen because it'll be easier to see, but rune most certainly is missing toes 
And the reason that's a problem for crested geckos is because they have those tiny little microscopic hairs called, I think it's pronounced setae, and they grab onto surfaces with them, which makes them excellent climbers. They're super arboreal as a species, um, which is why we give them vertically oriented enclosures rather than horizontally oriented ones. However, because Little Miss Rune doesn't really have full toes, in fact, they are just kind of little nubbies, like they're, they're smaller. They kind of look normal there, but I promise you, normally like at the ends of crested gecko toes are rounded and have little claws. There is none here except on one, maybe two toes on the front. And the back, I think the back has some, but not as much. Um, but yeah, just, just a little gecko who's not going to be able to climb as well. And as you know, I have a crested gecko named Rue with metabolic bone disease. It's pretty severe and she's had it her whole life, so she's adapted really well. And she does live in an 18-18-24 exoterra like my abled crested geckos, but hers is oriented in a way that she can kind of hop from branch to branch and um, use that instead. One thing I do with all of my crested geckos or all of my enclosures in general is I offer a background and sides that have texture because I think that that's more enriching, but it'll be especially important for this one because Rune will need to be able to climb onto the back of the enclosure. And if it was just glass, she wouldn't be able to do that. So in the meantime, she's going to be getting a small vertically oriented enclosure. That way she doesn't jump up super high and end up falling because she doesn't have great balance or great grip, not balance, just grip. I already have plans to build this one as she grows. She'll have an 18 by 18 by 12, which I know is short. And again, I have reiterated it's just because she's little and because I'm still learning about her capabilities in terms of climbing, but she will have in that 18 by 18 by 12, she will have the sides and background done up with textured material and she will have a lot of branches and a lot of cork to climb in and hide on. I think cork is going to be essential for her, so I'm going to make sure I utilize a lot of that cork and grippy texture in her enclosure. The garter snake, who is so very chill, aren't you sweet lady? She's just vibing, is Rune, and this is Sasha, and they are newcomers on this channel, and I- oh, you doing a wee lick? You licking your eyeball? Oh my gosh, that's my favorite! I like when Krista Geckos do that. I'm gonna go get these two set up because I know they've had a long and stressful journey. Not that they were improperly packaged or anything, they're packaged perfectly, which is why they're both in good condition. Their cups are stable, everything looks good. It's still a stressful and long journey for them nonetheless, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them set up. So I've set her right in here and she can decide to come out when she's ready. I think she's also about to shed, so hopefully she has a good time. She has a humid hide right here. So hopefully that does the trick for her. And while she's waiting, I will go ahead and start getting Rune ready to be put in her enclosure, AKA Morph. Okay, girly. Here's a branch right in front of you. And then she's got, I also left some food in here that I just made for my crusties last night. So she's on their feeding schedule. She's got a tiny bit of water here, not enough that she could drown or anything, but just if she wants a little bit of refresher from her trip. She's got all these little plants, and she's got a couple low branches in here. See, there's, they're just hidden by plant, and then she has a ground hide. And then I'm also going to cover this to give her more security with a little blanket. And of course, it has a lid. There you go, girly. Let's see how well you climb that. And I'm also going to spray down the enclosure here in a second. So I have half the top covered with acrylic all the way down just to trap in some of the humidity because it's such a low, like a short enclosure. And then she's still there. I have to spray the enclosure still, but I've covered half of it with this blanket to help keep it nice and dark so she feels secure. And then we're going to head back over and Sasha still hasn't moved. Come on up, baby girl. Oh, okay. Here you go. You're okay. There you are. I know, it's such a long journey. You came all the way from California. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're upside down here, girl. There you go. And I've given her a substrate to burrow in because, you know, garters like to burrow. It's just eco-worth and it helps hold some humidity, which is important for their shed, and especially since she's about to. She has a bit of sphagnum moss and eco-worth in this hide to offer. 
um, a nice humid spot. And then this is her warm head over here. Right now she just has an extra tank heater, but I need to get an over overhead heating. It just for temporarily she has a under tank heating in her enclosure with Mika, so she will have overhead heating. But I think because she might have to be in here a little bit, I'm gonna have to get an overhead heating as well. And right now I think she's about to shed, so she's probably gonna have a little unpleasant time because this is all new surroundings that she can't see super well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let her get adjusted we're gonna make it nice and dark we're gonna put a roof on put a little blanket over it and call it a day she has ventilation in here and in the roof as well so don't get worried she has plenty but yeah she, she's <laughs> she's super cute oh she found the hide perfect yes girly go ahead so let's let them both get settled in and uh yeah that's it i came back to add a water bowl because i wanted to wait to see how big sasha was before i went and chose it but look she's got her head popped out so cute and like i put my hand in there to move this leaf to clear a good shot and she didn't even care and i think part of it is because she can't see as you can see her eyes are all grayed out because she's about to shed but my garter snake mikasa is a lot less friendly than this <laughs> so Man, I just feel bad about her being alone, so I hope that she, uh, hope we can get her to grow a bit fast and she can go with Mika so soon. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below. Thank you for watching. Also, please forgive my appearance. I have been waiting in front of the window since 8 a.m. It is now almost noon, <laughs> so <laughs> I just look a little rough. I didn't sleep super well. I never do before I get the, the animals because I just want to make sure everything goes okay. You're just a little active one, aren't you, Rune? So I'm going to go move these two into their temporary enclosures. And with all that said, I will give you guys proper updates uh, on my other platforms. So make sure you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and here as well. Make sure you're subscribed. I thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. And a special thank you from me, Benjen, and the rest of the animals here at Discus Animal Friends to our patrons and channel members. Mm -hmm.